The Carnegie uh, Plate Collection includes over 200,000 astronomical photographic plates. Uh, it's the second largest collection in the United States. Uh, it includes plates uh, from three major observatories, uh, Mount Wilson, Palomar, and Las Capanas Observatory in Chile. Um, the plates span uh, from about 1892 until the early 1990s, so 100 years worth of astronomical observations. So I was looking through the plate vault for interesting images behind the Neptune divider. I found a set of plates that said Constantia 315 and then Pluto written in all caps. Then I noticed the date said 1925, which gave me great pause because of course Pluto was discovered in 1930. And, uh, I couldn't help but wonder why was this plate from 1925 marked Pluto. So I realized it was a very large section of the sky. As it turns out, it was about 14 and a half by nine and a half degrees on the sky. There was a lot of markings in one corner. So my first question was, why do these plates exist? Is Pluto on the plate? And there was a notation that said, remeasured 1931 by UM. So who is UM? So uh, my next step was to figure out if Pluto existed on the plates. So the first thing I did was pull out the plate, look at it on a light box. I took photographs of the plates, and then some postdocs at the observatories pointed me towards a program called astrometry.net. I was able to send my photograph through. It does pattern matching, and it tells me exactly where it is on the sky. And I was able to use another program to figure out exactly where Pluto existed on the sky from everything we know today. Now the question was, could we see it? Was it an actual measurement? We also compared it against images with Aladdin and the digitized sky survey to make sure we were in the right portion of the sky. And sure enough, we saw a lovely little smudge. <laughs> <laughs> and so we believe this was a Pluto detection. So now I had the other side of the story, which is the historical significance of the plates. So I looked on the um, archive, which is an online repository of astronomical papers, and found a paper in 1931 that was published by Gustav Stromberg and Nicholas U. Mayall. So I discovered who UM was. It said that they had, um, after the discovery of Pluto, found plates that had Pluto on them and gave their exact coordinates. I then compared their measurements to our, my modern day measurements using our digitized capabilities. And it turns out their measurements were spot on. And so we knew for sure that we have a detection of Pluto on plates about five years before Pluto was discovered. What's really remarkable to me was uh, how the astronomers were able to extract very precise measurements from the photographic plates. Uh, I myself grew up as an astronomer in the 90s, and by that point we already had uh, digital cameras. And so for us it's pretty easy. We take an image on the sky and we can put it on our computer and make a pretty precise measurement. These astronomers did the same thing with just an eyepiece looking at a plate. And to me that's a really remarkable uh, skill that I think few of the modern astronomers actually have.